Welcome to Faith Church, an assembly of heavenly minded, Christ centered professionals and young adults. We are delighted that you are here to worship, pray, and learn at the feet of Abba with us today. Stay with us throughout this month as we journey through the reassurances of His Word that we will never be alone. Stay tuned. Can I move on to my message now? If you want me to move on, shout a loud hallelujah and wave your hand and let me see you. God bless you. You know, today I'm going to be talking about something that people talk about for so long, but people find it difficult to leave. Let's close our eyes to pray. Father, I pray. Lord, today I pray that your word will touch our lives. As we go through your word briefly, before connecting to the GCK program of today, I ask, Lord, you will teach us how to live. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we'll pray and let the church say a real amen. I didn't hear your amen loud enough. Say louder, amen. God bless you. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you on the true picture of love. The true picture of love. And as we go through scriptures and as we look in particular at our text today, in Matthew chapter 14 and in verse 3, Matthew chapter 14 and in verse 3, for Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. Before I jump to verse 14, I skipped a couple of verses. You've read the text. You know, John was a close associate of Jesus Christ. And as a close associate of Jesus Christ, he wasn't just an associate. He was a forerunner. He was one who came to make the announcement before Christ's ministry commenced. They had such a very tight relationship. In fact, the disciples of John Eventually, were the disciples, part of the disciples of Christ. The bond between them was so strong that even their mothers were bonded by love. In fact, if you would talk about all the people who were close to Jesus, John was probably one of the closest to Christ. And as we come to Matthew chapter 14, John had been killed because Herod was angry with John. And after killing John, Jesus Christ heard the news. Such a painful news. Such a difficult to hear news. Who would have thought that when Jesus hears a news like this, he will go into depression? Who would have thought that when Jesus hears a news like this, he will feel pain. He will withdraw from the people. But look at what the Bible says in verse 14. Jesus went forth after hearing this bad news. And he saw a great multitude. Who do you think would come to the mind of someone who was suffering such a bereavement at a time like this? The Bible says, when Jesus heard and saw what was happening, something happened. Jesus Christ said, these people, I'm not going to leave them like that. The Bible says, he was moved with compassion towards them. And verse 19, he fed them. The true picture of law. Jesus was in pain. But the pain did not stop him from expressing love to the people. The true picture of love. As we talk about love today, everyone wants to talk about love. Everyone speaks things about love. Everyone dreams about love. Everyone writes about love. In fact, if you want to check the most popular four-letter word in the world today, it is love. But do people have a true picture of love? And that's why as we look at the true picture of love, before I delve into talking about love, what can we say is not real love? Number one, if you see someone experiencing these things which I'm going to mention now, then that is not real love. Love without appreciation. You know, there are some people that have this entitlement mentality. Oh, they believe you have to love me by force. 
force. Oh, they believe you have to do this to me by force. That's not real love. Entitlement mentality is not real love. Love without appreciation. You know, someone does something to you and you look at what the person does. You know, the other day, uh, I have a relative, man. And this, my relative, you know, came one day and was like, oh, I need you to send me some money because I need money for so, so, so. And I sent the money. And when I sent the money, you know, I expected her to send me a message back to say thank you for this money you have sent. But instead of sending me a message back, guess what happened? She wrote, and she sent a message. She said, I asked you for money. And you of all people, who oh, I know, oh, I know you have money. Look at how much you sent to me. Is this the best you can do? Why can you not send much more than this? You have all the money you can have. Say it more than this. You know, and I was laughing that day because out of the little I had, I gave this person love without appreciation. She didn't give me to say thank you. In fact, even though she's a relative, all she could do was complain. And there are people like that who are prayed with love without appreciation. That's not real love. Number two, love without backbone. People that can't stand for you. Oh, I love you, I love you. When the little wind blows, they buckle. When the little wind blows, they disappear. Love without backbone. Love without correction. You know, there are some people that say, I love you, but they don't correct you when they see you going wrong. They say, oh, my love for you is so strong. I don't know how to correct you. I don't want you to feel bad. That is not true love. Love without decision. And then, you know, the brothers who say pity has come for us again. There are brothers who are friend zoned some sisters. And you've been friend zoning a sister one year has passed, two years have passed, three years have passed, four years have passed, five years have passed. My brother, you are wicked. You say you have love, love without a decision. Why are you friend zoning the sister? And there are sisters that are friend zoning brothers. You know, sister. Anybody that wants to talk to this brother, you enter into your you know, say, your eyes are red in anger because someone is greeting this brother. It's the person who is you know greeting this brother because you don't want to see any sister around this brother. You are friend zoning the brother sister. You may be operating with the spirit of witchcraft because why are you friend zoning the brother for four years, five years because of the material things you are getting from the brother. You are not taking a decision. You are not going. You are not saying. Love without decision is not real love. Love without expression. You know, some husbands will say, oh, I love my wife. Show us the evidence of that love. You say you have love. What is the expression of the love? That's not real love. Love without fellowship. You know, there's some people say, oh, I love everybody, but I'm just a loner. I like being on my own. I don't anybody love without fellowship that's not true love. love without giving you know the bible says you see your brother have need and when you see your brother have need instead of settling the problem of your brother instead of resolving the problem of your brother you are there telling stories you don't know how to give even though you have love without giving that's not real love you know, that love that doesn't know how to give something, you know, in return, love without holiness. May I tell you that uh, if you have this type of love with your own selfish interest, you have this type of love, you know, you what you want to achieve, and you, you are coming with the camouflage of love, drop the love word. Love without holiness is not real love. What about love without impact? You know, love that just speaks, no change in the life of somebody. Opportunities will come that you should extend to this person that you say you love. You don't extend the opportunities to the person. And every time you keep saying, oh, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Stop. Keep quiet. You don't
without knowledge. You know, you love, what do you know about me? You know, you know, the situation on ground, you just have surface love. You don't want to go in debt. Look at Jesus Christ. When he saw the people and the disciples came, I said, let's send them. You just said, what is their problem? I love them. What is the challenge they have? And the disciples say they are hungry, but there's no food to eat. Jesus said, because I have knowledge of their challenge, I can resolve it. You know when you say you love somebody and you don't have knowledge of the person's situation? You know, someone will come sometimes and say, Pastor, she's my best friend. Pastor, he's my uh, best friend. What do you know about him? What do you know about her? You know, many times, I know as a minister, as a pastor, I see it. I know, you know, I know, you know, I see a lot of people. I see a whole lot of people. You know, sometimes uh, someone will come into me and you know, the person will be discussing. And after the person has finished discussing the person's life with me, and the person has told me about deep, deep challenges that he or she is passing through, the person will introduce this person, oh, this is my friend. Out of everything you have told me, what does your friend know about you? Oh, I'm sorry, my friend doesn't know anything about me. What those type of love that does not have knowledge is wrong. Love without loyalty. Love without loyalty. It cannot stand. It just falls through the cracks every point of time. Love without manners. Oh, you love someone, but you have bad manners. You love someone, your love is toxic. Your presence is despicable because every time you are around, that's your love is choking. It would almost want to destroy the person. Love without manners is not real love. Love without neighborliness. You know, you cannot be at peace with anybody. Every time when you come in into a place, there's always chaos. You know, there are some people that you can live without because every time they come around you, there's always a problem to solve. Love without neighborliness. Love without openness. You know, just as I have spoken about people who don't have knowledge, those who are not open and say they love people. If you say you love me and I say I love you and you cannot open up about the situation on ground and everything about you I'm hearing from a third party. Every challenge that happens for, to you I'm hearing from a third party. You know, and sometimes I'm seeing surprises on the wall and people are expecting me to be that person who is able, you know, to, to protect you and yet you are not open to me. You are not open because you don't trust me. How can you say you love me when you don't trust me? Love without openness is not real love. Love without purpose. Why do you love me? I just love you. This is a lie. It's a lie. This is pretentious. What is the purpose of the love? My brother, I just looked at you and I loved you. That thing doesn't exist. It only exists in novels. Uh, you just see this one. How ah, is that the way you sang today? In fact, I love you. What do you love me for? I just love you. You just love me just like that. Without any purpose. Run away, my sister. Run away, my brother. Those who come with purposeless love, they would one day hit you with a purposeless challenge. They will one day hit you with a purposeless arrow. Everything must have a purpose. Love without purpose. Love without quality. You know, shallow love. No quality, just words of mouth. That's not real love. Look at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ to express his love. He did something that will make the people know, oh, truly, I love you. Love without quality. Love without responsibility. You know, you say you love, you don't want to carry responsibility. You say, uh, oh, please, uh, Let's in our squad. We need to work together. And you are the one who shouts the loudest. When responsibilities are to be shared, you're always not available. Always not available. But when it comes to the time to make recommendations, you're always putting all the recommendations on the table. Love that doesn't want to bear responsibility is not real love. Love without sacrifice. That's not real love. Love without thoughtfulness. Love without uprightness. Love without value. Oh, I love you. Since the day you love me, or since you started the love, what value have I gotten from the love? Have you ever spent one hour to pray for me for the past 10 years I have known you? Have you ever sat down one day to discuss with me 
to see my future plans and be able to help me reposition myself to the better. You say you love me. Where is the thoughtfulness? Where is the value? Where is the, the worth of the love? Love without thoughtfulness, love without uprightness, love without value, and finally, love without works. Love that doesn't have some action tied to it. Love without works. As we look at the true picture of love, looking at what Jesus Christ displayed, what do we talk about love? Genuine activities. Let me talk to you about genuine activities of true love. Genuine activities of true love. In Matthew chapter 14, in verse 1, Herod heard of the fame of Jesus. In verse 3, Herod laid hand on John, bound him. In verse 10, Herod beheaded John. In verse 12, the disciples came, they took the body, they buried John, and they came to tell Jesus Christ about John. In verse 14, after they told Jesus, Jesus went forth, saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. He healed their sick. Love, love. As we talk about love, you need to ask yourself a picture. What type of love do I exhibit? What type of love do I have? Genuine activities of love. In Matthew chapter 14, in verse 15, when it was evening, Jesus Christ and his disciples were gathered together. And the disciples came and they told Jesus Christ, this is a desert place. The place is hot. Time is fast. Let's send this multitude away. They've listened to the word. They sent them away with the word they have listened to. Let them go and take care of themselves. The Bible says, Jesus said to them, we have given them the word. They have listened to the word. We have taught them about heaven, but they are hungry. Don't send them away like that. The word is important. There is a place for the word. Tell it, beloved. Let me tell you something. The spirituality of the spiritual should not replace the goodness of the godly. The spirituality of the spiritual should not replace the goodness of the godly. Oh, you are spiritual, yes. How good are you? I keep telling you. The Bible says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is a sin. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 14, he told the disciples in verse 16, he says, you have to give them something to eat. In verse 17, the disciples came and they said, see, we don't have much. This is all we have. In verse 18, Jesus said, bring them here to me. We cannot let these people go away with hunger in their stomach. When they go away with hunger in their stomach, what will the world do with them? When they are so weak, they cannot carry themselves again. And we have. That which we have, why can't we start giving them from it? Genuine activities of love. As we talk about genuine activities of love, number one, love is active in spite of challenges. Love is active in spite of challenges. We see that in this Matthew chapter 14, in verse 13 to verse 15, Jesus made it practical. Love is active in spite of love. Dearly beloved, when we say love is active in spite of challenges, in spite of challenges, number one, it means give, even when you need gifts. Number two, it means be hospitable, even when you need help. Number three, it means inspire, even when you need inspiration. It means, therefore, that every one of us has something that we can give. And challenges may be there. The trials may be there, difficulty may be there, but the type of love we are talking about, like we see in the ministry of Jesus Christ, it is active in spite of challenges. The disciples said, we don't even have enough for ourselves. Jesus said, out of that little that you have, let us share to this people. Genuine activities of love. Number two, it's affectionate without conditions. Affectionate without conditions. In Matthew chapter 14, in verse 17, and he said to him, we have here but five clothes and two fishes. It is impossible to feed the people with this. They will not appreciate what we are going to do with this. In fact, 
The disciples were not happy they were telling Jesus Christ. If we keep this and put this to it, what will be your disciples eat? Jesus said, bring it. Guess what? As he said, bring it, he knew the disciples would not be happy. Affectionate without conditions. It's okay. I'll do what is right. As he said, bring it, he knew that the fate of the people at that time was such that how can you share five loaves of bread and two fishes for thousands of people to the disciples? And he knew their faith at that time. The bread was just going to be everybody get a little bit. But Jesus said, no matter what it is, let people see that beyond the preaching, our works can be put into action. Our love can go to us touching lives beyond the world. How many lives have you touched? It is affectionate without conditions. Christ wasn't expecting anything back from any of them, but he said, I will still show love. When we talk about love being affectionate without conditions, number one, it means expect nothing back in return. The way you show love, there are some people, and let me tell you, God will read out those who are targeting people to express love to because they have come. You know, some people have heard. The other day, someone, someone said, um, I joined faith because I have this business and um, I want some people to come on the business. And that is the only set of people this person talks to in faith. See, that business will not succeed. You know why? Because that business is biased. The only people you greet, you know, a particular brother, I will tell you, because if I don't tell you the truth, who will? Should I go ahead? I should go ahead. Thank you. God bless you. In a particular brother <sighs> has been targeting sisters that have good jobs. He has gone to the first one. She said no. He went to the second one. She said no. He went to the third one. She said no. He hasn't given up. He has gone to the fourth one. She would say no again. By the way, let me just give you the announcement I had. Because your love is biased. You come to the whole of faith with all these four programs we are doing. Your own assignment is sisters' ministry. And the sisters you are targeting, sisters that have good jobs, all the sisters you approach, we keep saying no until you repent. Can someone say amen to that? Because it is biased. Let love be without condition. Be affectionate without conditions. Expect nothing back in return. Number two, express nobility without retaliation. Oh, they did this. Forget about it. Let me tell you. When you sow seeds of love, your reward is not from the people. Your reward is from the creator of the people. Number one. Number two. Every seed of your love your plants today is a seed that is waiting in the future for you with bountiful harvest that you cannot imagine. So it. Stop expecting instant returns. Express nobility without retaliation. Eh, eh, I did this, she didn't do that. It's okay. I gave him this, he didn't do this. It's okay. Just learn to do it. Then number three, I'm going to mention this, particularly because I found out that many people, when they do evangelism, they do targeted evangelism. Do you know what it is to be affectionate without conditions? It is to evangelize the rebellious. <laughs> evangelize the rebellious. So that means you reach out to those that people would not typically want to touch, affectionate without condition. Then number three, as we talk about, you know, um, this type of genuine activities of love, they are elevating to the concern, elevating to the concern. You know, when, when, you, when you say you love me and everything you are doing doesn't make my life better, you know, what benefit is that love? Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4 from verse 19 to 21, he fed the multitude and they were fed. Praise the name of the Lord. He gave them food to eat. They ate the food. He did not give them poison to eat. You know, the other day I went to visit somebody. And uh, when I went there some years back, 
I have not gone to his house again. I will not go to his house again anyway. Um, I've forgiven him, but I will not go so that he will not poison me. And then maybe he wasn't angry that I asked for, maybe he wasn't happy that I asked for food. And then when I asked for food, the type of food he gave to me, you know, I looked at the food. You know, there's some food that even when you want to sanctify the food, you are worried with the prayer of sanctification you are praying because you'll be like, God will even be asking you, my dear, there's some food you shouldn't bother sanctifying. This food, just leave it for dog. Because, you know, the food was impalatable. And there are people like that. The things you cannot give yourself are the things you give out to others. It's not elevating. Some people give to give a stamp that I have given. No. When Jesus Christ fed the multitude. Did you read your Bible? Look at it. Let me show you something. In Matthew chapter 14, the Bible says in verse 19, he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. He made them to be comfortable. He did not say, do you know who is giving you food? Do you know who I am? Do you know where I'm coming from? Do you know where I bought my suits from? Do you know that uh, this one I'm coming to come and serve you now? Do you know I'm humbling myself to serve you? Uh -uh. He made them comfortable. At that point in time, the best place to sit was the grass. Left to the disciples. Disciples would have left them say, take, go, take, go. People are hungry. You are hungry. Jesus Christ said, gather them together. Make them comfortable. And when he made them comfortable, the Bible says he took the loaf. Jesus himself. He took the fishes. He blessed it. He break it. He then gave it to the disciples. I said, share it to the multitude. The Bible says they did all it. They were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, 12 baskets full. You know what happened? These people were giving this food to eat. The food was very nice. Bread and fish. You know, some of you, you've not eaten bread and geisha. We used to do that when we were in the boarding school. If you have not, uh, maybe one of the school programs, you should organize people to eat bread and geisha or bread and sadi. It used to be delicious when I was younger. I don't know if it's still that delicious today. You know, Jesus Christ gave them balanced food. He did not give them only carbohydrates. Bread, you know. Some people, you want to give someone something, you give food, bread, or rice, no meat. No, Jesus Christ gave them balanced diet. And when they ate, the balance of what was there. You know what happened? As he gave the people to eat, the people saw, which is why love is important. When the people saw the type of love I expressed, when the bread and the fish got into their hands, they did not want to waste it. The Bible says they took what was going to fill them and they gave the remaining back to the disciples that please take and gather in the basket. That's what happened in this passage. When love is genuine, it spreads and genuine love becomes a norm. The people said, no, we're not going to waste this bread. You know, and they didn't do like those who will come to party and, you know, when you serve rice, they take their own rice, they take two other people's rice, they put it into their, I'm not saying the sisters, but people are looking at the way I'm doing my hand and they are saying, no, no, no it's not necessarily sister. It can be anybody. So brothers even put meat and cake inside their suit. So, you know, it, it happens. No, these people said, no, look at the love. Christ took the bread and the fish that was for the disciples. He shared it for us. We've taken our own parts. This is left. Let them take it and share for others. The Bible says, from those who took and gave what was left, when they gathered it together, 12 baskets was full. Love. It was elevating to the concern. Number one, if you want to show real love, it should be solution. The challenge. My brother, what is the challenge? How can we solve the challenge? My sister, what is the challenge? How can we solve the challenge? Let this, your love, be a solution to a real problem. Don't create a problem where there is not. And you not create a solution because you already have a solution. So some people come and say, bro, how are you? Um, you need to be wearing t-shirts. Take t-shirts. A brother you have never seen wearing t-shirts before. You are giving him t-shirt because you have t-shirt. No, you are not solving his problem. He will collect it from you because he doesn't want to disrespect you. But guess 
difficult. It doesn't mean anything to him. It should be solution to real problem. Number two, it should be so called to real people. And number three, it should be satisfying to a purpose. Godly application quickly of transferred love. Godly application of transferred love. You know, in Matthew chapter 14, as we read from verse 19 to 21, as Jesus Christ gathered the people, he fed them. The Bible says in verse 21, and they that ate with 5,000 men beside women and children. In verse 23, guess what happened? When he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Follow up. After feeding them spiritual food, he gave them physical food. Jesus Christ wanted to be sure that there was a connect in the spiritual realm between those two things. He set himself apart to pray. Such great application of law. In First John chapter 4, not talking to us, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. I know it's God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. No man has seen God at any time. I hope you all know that. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected not. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he's a liar. For you have he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? As we look at Christ's love, God wants us to express that type of love. In Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 15, we have not that high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. What was in all point? Tempted like as we are, yet without sin. What type of love does God expect us to have? Godly application of transferred love. The love of Christ that he has transferred to us. How do we use that love? Number one, he wants it to be a love that feels. That's a love that has empathy. Love that feels. You feel the pain people are passing through. Look at what the Bible says about Christ in Hebrews chapter 4. That he feels what we are passing through. Love that feels. Number two, love that finds. When you feel the pain of somebody, look for the person. Look for the solution. Find the solution. Look for the people. Connect people to solutions. Connect people to opportunities. Number three, love that feeds. Love that feeds. You know, don't leave people hungry. You say, oh, and pity. I don't have enough myself. Yes, it's okay. It's fine. Guess what? In taking care of that, God will take care of you. Love that feeds. Number four, love that facts checks. Love that fact checks. You know, it's not everything you hear about people you would believe. If you are going to be a true disciple of law, a true disciple of Christ, when you hear something, fact check. You know, I don't know why that error is gone, but thank God it is coming back again. Can I hear an amen? You know, before, when you hear something about somebody, you go and ask the person, excuse me, I heard this about you. Excuse me, I heard that about you. Um, I, know I have a large, a large congregation of you young people here. Um, let me just tell you, brothers, in case you don't know, those of you that have been jumping from up to down, the sisters have decided it is the Sorosoki generation. So everything you tell Sister A, because she knows that you are not straightforward, she's going to broadcast it to a select group of sisters who she knows you are going to go to next. So that when you see it, she's fact-checking what you are saying. Ah, um, sister, I've never talked to anybody, you know. In the past two years, I have been praying. And God has directed me to you. I saw you in my dream and I was splitting your hair. It is a lie. You sent me to Sister So 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 three months ago. They will fact check. They will fact check. Because that's how love is. If you have nothing to hide, be open. And I have this business idea. It's a lie. Fact check. Love that fact checks. That's the type of love we're talking about today. Then you hear something about this brother, you hear something about this sister. No matter how bad it is you have heard about this person, don't just write people off. Love fact checks. You know, have you ever thought about Jesus Christ and Zacchaeus? Who would have gone to show love to Zacchaeus? You know, Jesus Christ, Zacchaeus was written off. Nobody wanted to be close to Zacchaeus. Nobody wanted to relate to Zacchaeus. Jesus went to look for Zacchaeus. And did you read it to your Bible? The Bible says Zacchaeus was a man of little stature. Did you read it to your Bible? He wasn't so tall. And as Jesus Christ was moving, Jesus Christ was physically and spiritually searching for Zacchaeus. 
Physically, while he was scouting around for Zacchaeus, he did not find Zacchaeus at all. Spiritually, the Lord said, oh, and the Spirit of the Lord said, Zacchaeus is somewhere there. And he looked up. He saw Zacchaeus up in the sycamore tree. Even though everyone abandoned Zacchaeus, spiritually and physically, the Lord sought out Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus eventually became a pillar in the church. You see, that person you are abandoning because of what you have heard, without fact checking, may be the next pillar in the church. Maybe the next pillar in your life. You know, something happened some years ago. A particular young boy, he was in the medical school at Ileife. And then, you know, he came to meet me. And then his family members were very angry with him. They were angry with him because he wasn't doing so well academically. And so he came to meet me. He said, hey, well, um, I'm sorry, I'm not doing well academically, but I think this is where um, the opportunity in my life is. I want to go and read this other thing in so so country. And you know, um, his brothers were very angry. No, you should go back to Ife. You know what the Ife of today, um, where, you know, some of you finished from? The issue of that time was hard. And this young man was already having mental issues. He was already depressed because he couldn't cope with all the stress. But everybody wrote him off. Everybody abandoned him. You know, just, you know, we just encouraging a few of us. Thank God. And I think I'm encouraging. You know something? I see a great future in you. People don't see what I'm saying. What I am seeing in you, you that you are looking at me this morning, what I'm seeing in you is God's bastion of opportunities waiting to be fulfilled. And it is going to be fulfilled. What God has already started doing in the lives of those of you in this faith church, I'm hearing testimonies from all over. You know, I'm not around. Here, even just this night, I heard testimonies. Well, night is morning in your place. It's still uh, about, uh, I think, just, just, I was here just about 2 a.m. before it cost me about four while I was ministering. I still hear testimonies from those of you in faith. I was in another state um, just uh, two days ago. I heard testimonies. I was in another country two weeks ago. I heard testimony. Your own testimony is about to come out. And the type of testimonies I'm hearing, there are testimonies that when I hear, I'm like, ah, I'm happy. I didn't know that I had a celebrity in faith. You are a celebrity. I thought I would hear you say amen. People may not see it, but it is there. Look at how Christ speaks Zacchaeus. And so this young man from Ife, eventually we encourage him. Do you know today, this young man is a consultant in the UK. The other day, he took me to his company. He said, please, you must come and see this, my new business. I went there. I looked at the company, which he has built. He's gotten all these medical qualifications now. He's created this big medical research, you know, organization. He's doing well. Today, he's, he's the one sponsoring people. Oh, you go to this country. Go to school in this country. You go to school. He asked me the other day, hey, who, hey, who should I sponsor around you? You know, and I look at him today. What if we had written him off? Fact check. When people tell you something about somebody, before you write the person off, sit with the person and check. In fact, let me tell you something. If anyone has written you off, listen, listen to me. Don't listen to them. God will turn your story to become a story that those who have written you off will celebrate in Jesus' name. Can I hear you shout a real amen? Are you afraid to shout amen? Shout a greater amen. Love that purchase, then love that is factual, love that is factual, love that is fulfilling, love that fellowships, love that follows off, follows up, love that follows up. You know, learn to check up on people. Don't be like me. I know some of you say, ah, Pity, I sent you a message I did not respond. I'm sorry, I'm going to repent after this message. I think God is also using this message to talk to me. You know, I'll try my best. But learn to follow up on people, you know, learn to check up on people. That's, that's why we are here. We are here to check up, to support and build each other. Then love that flourishes and love that is focused. Finally, before we pray, great appreciation of the choice love. In Hebrews chapter 2 in verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? 
which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. In Romans chapter 5 and in verse 8, the Bible says, God commended his love towards us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6, he says, God, who is rich in mercy, for his great work when he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us again. But six says, he has raised us all together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. Great appreciation of the trust law. No matter how much a man loves, no love can be like that of God. Like that of God. We should appreciation for the love of Christ. Number one, loyal praise to the unfailing creator. Loyal praise to the unfailing creator. Give him praise. Don't praise him because of what he has done. Like I always tell you, just praise him because of who he is. He's the unfailing creator. Number two, a life of purity and unwavering conviction. If you want to show appreciation for the truest love that has ever and will ever exist, then you need to live a life of purity and unwavering conviction. Number three, living purposefully despite untenable criticisms. Living purposefully, despite untenable criticism, you know, because of God's love for you. People may not see where you are going to, but God has invested so much in you. Because of God's investment in you, you need to disappoint your critics who don't believe in you. Number five, number four, loving passionately without unholy conditions. Be like Christ. Loving passionately without unholy conditions. Don't forget, it checks your heart. So when I say without unholy conditions, it's not camouflage or holy condition. Real unholy conditions. Number five, leading the perishing to undeniable conversion. You know, because of how he loved you, share this love. Share it in different ways. Number six, liberating the prisoners to unfathomable comfort. Those who are held in chains. Those who are bound in different... Listen, there is an anointing on you that no man can quench. You need to exercise the anointing as a show of trust in God who has put that anointing in you. And finally, lasting prioritization of our unfathomable cover. Lasting prioritization of our unfathomable cover. You know, it casts us. The Bible says, he molds us in his image. And you need to give him lasting prioritization. That means whenever anything is going to try to push God away from your life, you push that in away. God must be your priority every point in time. You know, this morning we've learned about love. How much do you love? And have you tasted the truest of all love? Let's rise up upon our feet to pray. And this morning, as we begin to pray, maybe you are here. You've not experienced genuine love from anybody. Everywhere around you is so caustic. Everywhere around you is so bitter. Everywhere around you, you are so, you know, everything is so choked up, you know, today. You can experience true love. I thank God for this faith family. This faith family is a place where God's love exists. And this morning, why don't you just commit yourself to the hands of the Lord and say, Lord, this morning, I'm not going to waste your investment in my life. I'm not going to let the critics be successful in their criticisms. I'm going to show forth what you have put in me. I'm going to show forth love that is real. And if you are here today, you've not been expressing true love. Maybe you are not even born again, so you've not tasted the real love of Christ. Why don't you start off with that and say, Lord, can I taste your true love so that I can be a true apostle of love? I'm going to hand over to Pastor Pius to lead the people in prayer for the next five minutes before we connect to the global crusade. Let the people commit themselves to the hands of God. True love, true love, true love. And those who have been doing things that God is not happy with, it's time to come to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, from today going forward, I'm going to be an ambassador of genuine true love. Over to you, Pastor Pius. Why not pray and commit yourself to the Lord in prayer? That God will give you that grace to manifest true love. Pray for grace. Pray for the empowerment this morning that God will empower you. 
there is a purpose there is a reason why god showed you his goodness why god showed you his mercies you are in that position to help you are in that position to show love the privilege you have today is to show the love of christ to the people around you why not pray and say oh lord help me help me to manifest true love this morning help me to manifest true love this morning the love that we give succor to the people around me the love that we give hope to the people around me pray that god will give you that grace this morning Pray that God will empower you this morning. Pray that the love you manifest will be a love with purpose. A love with impact. That is why we are here. That is why we are one big family. Where love is fully expressed, you must be part of this move. You must be part of this movement. You are in faith, church. We love you. We believe in you. We believe in the destiny God has assigned for you. No one is a write-off. No one is forgotten. Christ will show up in your life. 